Hey everyone, let's go for a bit of finance news this week. You know, normally when stories about business make it into the headlines, it means one of only five things. One, petrol prices are up and the BBC blames it on Brexit. Two, petrol prices are down, but the BBC claims it's the start of a Brexit-induced recession. Three, maybe petrol prices are flat, but an economist from the Labour Party is brought on to talk about wider Brexit-related economic concerns. I'm starting to spot a trend there. Number four, maybe unemployment is up because George Osborne keeps taking all of the jobs to add to his roster of other pretend jobs and nepotistic directorships. And of course, at some point, somebody is wheeled out to mention that if it weren't for the Brexit referendum, then George would still have his job at Westminster. Or number five, the perennial favourite, a football club going into administration because paying people 300 grand a week to play football isn't really a viable business model. It's always sad news, of course, for the fans, though, plus the loss of 11 jobs, perhaps more if you include the manager in the subs bench. Sad news, of course, as well for the taxman, because sometimes those footballers pay taxes on their wages, you know, at least if they're at a mid-ranking club. Anyway, the stock market. This week we're of course talking about GameStop, the computer game retailer, which this time last year was $4 a share, started the year at 17, and a couple of days ago hit nearly $500 a share as traders piled in on the event, and traders with keyboards competed with GameStop fanatics who presumably visited the store in order to pick up one of those controllers with a turbo button for doing their trading with. At the heart of it all is the online trading site Robinhood, where members of the public can log in and trade stocks and shares and derivative products, and you know, given what happened, it makes you really wonder if when they were asked for their username and password, a couple of them entered the Konami cheat code. To break down what happened, the shares were seen as overvalued by many in the finance world, so a lot of short sell options were placed. And that's where you place a bet by borrowing shares from other traders, sell them with an intent to buy them back later when they're cheaper, and effectively profit if the price goes down. But these positions are recorded and a group on Reddit spotted that they could make a lot of money and cause a lot of damage if they manipulated the price upwards. And so thus began a crowdfunded buying spree sending the price up. In trading terms this means that the short sellers had to either sell at a huge loss or buy yet more shares to cover their position. And this of course sends the price up further until it's higher than Jerry Garcia. This situation called a short squeeze effectively ends when enough people have sold at a loss that the price can once more return to find its true market price. In reality that means it will eventually crash to earth and wipe out anybody who bought in at the top. And this GameStop would say it's how you play the game that counts. And in terms of the Wall Street companies, well, they were like Sonic the Hedgehog when all the golden rings spill out of him. This, of course, is what Occupy Wall Street spent years trying unsuccessfully to do, except they did it by setting up a shabby campsite, whereas the Reddit group behind this week's events achieved it all sat in luxury chairs in their office with cases of energy drinks and probably eyeing up a sports car or two with money they made from trading it back and forth. Ironically enough, that sports car might be a Tesla, another share price with similar strange activity on it. This was also by no means a workers of the world unite kind of a thing. These kids were playing the game with mummy and daddy's money. But the reason behind it, of course, are kind of irrelevant so much as the outcome, namely that the era of populist anti-establishment action didn't die with the election of Joe Biden, any more than people's dislike of Harry and Meghan didn't die when they decided to flee the country with unpaid bills. Flash forward a day or two though and the Robinhood trading app banned buying or selling those GameStop shares, which is interesting because there's a series of financial links between Robinhood, the bank Citadel, and the GameStop business at the heart of it all. Go look that up elsewhere if you're interested, it's quite the rabbit hole. There's also so many lawsuits now being filed against the company that the legal profession are probably envious for the workload they had when it was only President Trump, trying to either sue a trade commission or maybe just scam a local contractor out of an invoice. The whole situation is actually so crazy that Ted Cruz, the darling of the right, retweeted something from hardcore leftist activist Alexandria Cortez. You know, it's like when you find a socialist workers leaflet warning people about the dangers of the EU and you realise just how bad something has to be for that broader spectrum of people to be in agreement. You was going to make an analogy of the spectrum being from infrared to ultraviolet, but if the uh, hard left involved then I guess it would be pronounced ultra violent. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these click subscribe.